Hello, hello, welcome to my channel, and today I am going to read you some of this book called Resistant Women by Jennifer Shaverny. I did film this twice, so yes, um, so I'm going to read the section of it, and then I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about it as well, um, so let's read the prologue. The prologue, November 1942. Mildred. The heavy iron doors open for, the, for a moment. Mildred stands motionless, blinking in the sunlight, breathless from the sudden rush of cold air. Fresh air caressing, fresh, cold, fresh air caressing her face and lifting her hand. The guard propels her forward into the prison yard, her grip painful and unyielding around her upper arm. Other women clad in identical drab, shapeless garments walk slowly and paired around the per parameter of the gravel square. Their sails with empty pass the gruff rim of the Geppetto's Priz, Priz Albrecht Dress Headquarters are so cramped that they can scarcely move. And now the prisoners bend, spread their arms, and lift their faces to the scattered dancers. dancers. <laughs> like dry autumn leaves scattered in a gust of wind. Gust of wind. Now, how many of them would never again? No more freedom than this. No talking, the guard reminds her. Why is this like? There you go. The guard reminds her, shoving, shoving her into the open yard, stumbling. She regains her footing and begins treading a di diagonal path between two corners of the high encircling walls, forbidden to walk with the others. She had done this ten precious minutes every day since her arrest two months before, and her stiff, aching limbs fall into the routine before she is conscious of it. Deliberately, she holds up her head and, and takes long, steady strides, in a far show of strength that cost her dearly. She has lost weight, and from the strains she finds on on her bunk each morning, she knows that her once luxurious blonde hair has grown brittle and white. Cough rack, rack, rack hurt almost consistently. Earlier that day, she had brought her hand away from her mouth and nose to find her palm spotted with blood. There was no medicine to spare for the people like her traitors to the third reach. Although it is correct to call, is it correct to call her a traitor? And she is American. It does not matter, not to her jailers, not to the law, to whom she is an American by birth, a dual citizen by marriage. To Adolf Hitler, it matters very much if she is an American or if she would have been born in Germany with her adopted home, the birthplace of her beloved husband. It was because she could not bear to be parted from him that she had remained in Berlin, even after the United States government warned its civilians to leave the country. Avoid, avoid her heart aches um, as she imagines him languishing in a crammed, cold, dimly lit cell like her own. Somewhere, not far away, but possibly beyond her reach, their trial is pending. Perhaps they will be reunited in the prison. They and all of their brave, unfortunate friends in the resistance cell, the Nazis call, quote, wrote, wrote Kabel, Kapel, Red Orchestra, for the elite music they had, had, they had broadcast to enemies of the reach. How strange it is that the guests though considered them so formidable an enemy. But they married to the sinister's name, 
or something flat and spiny. Yeah, among the dis diffused work network of writers, teachers, economics, UX, office workers, and laborers, they count not one professional spy. They are ordinary people from every walk of life. Her dear friend, Greta Kirkhart, who grew up poor earned her education and was determined to provide her young son with a better life. Sarah Welch enjoyed wealth and privilege until the Nazis declared the Jews undesirable and robbed them of every human civil and human right. Mildred's heart aches as she thinks of Sarah and the other students in the circle, brave, determined, like, determined, idealistic, with their whole lives ahead of them, risking more than they can fully understand. Where are they now? Scattered. Some imprisoned elsewhere, some in hiding. Others fled to distant lands. Only Mildred could seek help from Martha Dawn one last time. When Martha returned to the United States after her father was relieved of his duties as an ambassador, even if Mildred could get some could somehow get word to her out impulsive outspoken friend, what could Martha do? A fit of coughing seizes her. She doubles over, clumping her shoulder to brace herself inside the horse. Racking stops. When she can, she straightens, inhales deeply, ignores the floor bonding rattle in her lungs, and resumes her dialogue, dialogue path across the yard. And almost stops short from astonishment. Another prisoner holds her gaze as she treads, treads along the edges of the, hook of the, the prison yard. A strict, her stricken sympathy plan for Mildred to see. The woman is too pale and thin to be new for the prison. Surely she is aware of the grim conse conse consequences she will face with regard to see her, regarding Mildred with such a concern. After she had been sad part of a warning to others, the woman must know for she looks away, looks, quickly looks away. Mordred's heart sinks, only to rise again, um, again when the woman glances back and offers her the barest trace of an encouraging smile. Mordred feels new. Strength flows through her. It is just a glance, but it nourishes her starved soul. Her heart pounds as she looks out. The timing of a diagonal strike drives, and the woman's slow circuit, sir, uh, circuit of the yard. She quickens her pace, not enough to draw the guard's attention, but sufficiently that eventually her path and the woman's will intersect in the far corner of the yard. All the while, they steal glances at each other, silent messages that they are not alone. But there is always hope that when one least expects it, a shaft of light might pierce the darkest sky, and then they intersect. Though they cannot pause long enough to even to touch fingers, take care of yourself, Mildred mumbles as they shadow towards each other in a way. I'm in cell 25. Don't forget me when you get out. My name is Mildred Carmen. I'm Mildred Carmen, she repeats. Silently to herself as she turned to cross the yard again. Mildred Fish, her wife, sister, aunt, author, scholar, teacher, resistance fighter, spy. Don't forget me. Um, very interesting. I want to read this so bad. Like, so bad, but it seems like very emotional. So, this book is already out. It was out um, five. So, pick it up if you are interested in learning a spy about a spy in the Nazis and about the other women. There's more women than that. I think there's. Um, 
my stuff, this is kind of to, to, the story about how the Americans took down the Hitler's reign. So, yeah. If you want to read that, it's a really long book. So, yeah. If you want to read that, please, um, please, um, get the book. It's already out now. Um, get your copy. And that is it. Um, if you, um, want to check out my, um, below, check out my website. I do reviews on that, um, pretty regularly. So just check that out to see. And you can also, down below is my Goodreads link as well. So if you want to, you can be my friend and we can read stuff together and stuff. And that is it. I hope you have a great day. Comment about down below if you read Resistant Women and what you thought about it and or something. Um, and comment down below and I will be seeing you later. Bye.